Hi, I'm Dan Cordopassi. Welcome to Model Building Tips. In this episode, I'm going to show you some of my techniques for fixing coupler height. Having couplers at the right height will really help to cut down on unwanted uncoupling, so that's why I check for it in my own models. Couplers are the things that hold railroad equipment together. You couldn't really have trains without some kind of coupling. Knuckle couplers have been in use in North America for well over a century, and most of our model couplers mimic those. The main parts of the coupler are the knuckle, the shank, and the draft gear box. Knuckle couplers allow cars to couple together automatically. Uncoupling can be done with magnets or using an uncoupling tool like this one. In order for couplers to work their best, they all have to be mounted at the same height. The National Model Railroad Association, or NMRA S2 standard, specifies coupler heights for most common model railroad scales from Z through large scale. Coupler height is measured from the center of the knuckle. This is important because not all knuckles are the same size. This is a standard HO KD coupler, and this is a KD scale coupler. They will work together, but as you can see, the standard knuckle is bigger. Couplers that are mismatched in height can lead to unwanted uncoupling. If you see a full-size train, you might notice that once in a while you'll see a car that has couplers that are slightly lower or higher than they should be. It doesn't seem to cause much of an issue with real trains, so why is it such a big deal for models? Prototype couplers have a very small amount of vertical play, meaning that they can't flex up and down that much. Our model couplers, on the other hand, can move up and down a little bit. It's not that much, but proportionally they move a lot more than their full-size counterparts. The force of the train is transmitted from the draft gear box down the coupler shank to the knuckle. If the couplers are matched in height, then the force is evenly distributed across the knuckle. If they're mismatched, though, then there's some torque on the couplers. It's kind of like a crank, and that will make the couplers want to flex slightly. The same thing can happen if cars roll over bumps on uneven track. Now, if you only have short trains and no grades, it probably won't be that big of an issue. The longer the train, though, the more force there will be on the couplers. Grades will also add stress to the couplers. Add enough stress on mismatched couplers, and they may flex to the point where one knuckle slips up and over the other, resulting in unwanted uncoupling. Some HO scale cars and locomotives come from the factory with plastic couplers. I don't recommend using these as the plastic can distort when stressed. I've had plastic coupler knuckles fail on me and result in cars rushing down the hill in reverse enough times that I won't use plastic couplers in HO anymore. <coughs> this doesn't seem to be as much of an issue in N scale where the mass of the train is much lower. Microtrain's couplers are made of plastic and generally work very well. For those unfamiliar with the term, body mounted means that the coupler is attached to the car body. Most modern HO scale rolling stock has body mounted couplers. Truck mounted means that the coupler is mounted on the truck. This is more common in N scale, though in the past some HO scale models were made this way as well. A coupler height gauge is the easiest way to test coupler height. I use them in my product reviews. These are some coupler height gauges. This one is an N scale height gauge from Microtrains. This is an HON3 gauge from KD. In the middle is an old HO KD height gauge. This is a plastic KD height gauge. And this is a newer metal HO KD height gauge. The KDHO height gauge is a useful tool. In addition to measuring coupler height, it also has a tab to check trip pin clearance. The other end measures the correct height of the underside of an HO scale car floor so that the coupler will come out at the right height when mounted in a standard KD coupler box. Underneath is a three-point track gauge. There's also a movable metal dowel that's used to check the height of in between the rails and coupling magnets. The Microtrain's N scale coupler height gauge has a tab to check the underfloor coupling mounting height as well. In addition, there's a track gauge and a wheel gauge. The trip pin height gauge is a separate part. KD also offers height gauges in other scales, including O and large scale. Most knuckle couplers have trip pins that allow them to work with magnetic uncouplers. Some people don't use magnetic uncouplers and cut off the trip pins. Since there's no way to put them back on an HO scale KD once you do that, I prefer to leave mine in place. If you do that, then you'll sometimes need to adjust the trip pins to keep them from hanging too low. Katie sells a special pair of pliers for this job. To adjust the trip pin upwards, grip it like this. To adjust the pin downwards, flip the pliers over and grab it like this. N-scale trip pins can be adjusted with needle nose pliers or by simply moving the metal pin up or down in the plastic coupler. Other useful tools for adjusting coupler heights are files, screwdrivers, a hobby knife, and needle nose pliers. There are countless models out there, many of them put together in different ways. Because of that, there's no one method that will work for all trains. The basic idea is that if the coupler is too high, you need to lower it. You can do this either by lowering the coupler draft gear box or by lowering the entire car. 
If the coupler is too low, generally you either need to raise the entire car or find a way to raise the coupler mount. I've put together several examples to illustrate some of the most common situations. There are a few ways that you can adjust the coupler height quickly. One is to bend the coupler shank slightly up or down. I don't recommend doing this as Katie's and some other couplers are made of cast metal that can become brittle when bent. Plastic couplers might not retain their shape. Another method is to change the wheel size on a car. For example, if the couplers are too high on a car with 36 inch wheels, then substituting 33 inch wheels might lower it enough to be correct. In general, I don't like doing that because it often makes the car look unprototypical. A scale 3 inch size difference might not seem like a lot, but it is noticeable. For cars with truck mounted couplers though, this may be the only option if you don't want to body mount the couplers. Last, you can get couplers with an offset shank. This is an N-scale coupler from Microtrains with an underset shank, which will raise the knuckle. So now let's go through a few real-world examples and fix the coupler heights. This is an Atherin Genesis boxcar that I recently reviewed on this channel. Both couplers on this car are low. It looks like I already swapped out the stock McHenry couplers for Katie's on this one. Low couplers on a freight car are usually not too hard to fix. Since the coupler boxes on this car can't be easily moved, I'll need to raise the entire car. Be careful of the brake components on cars like this when removing the trucks. Katie sells paper washers for this purpose. The gray ones are 10 thousandths thick and the red ones are 15 thousandths. They're designed to fit between the car body and the truck to raise the car. I'll start with one gray washer on the B end. Hmm, now it looks a hair too high. Before I do anything more with the B end, I'll raise the other end. The A end looked a little lower, so I'll try a red washer. The A end looks pretty good. Now let's check the B end again. It looks good now. Sometimes there's a bit of a seesaw effect so that when you raise the coupler on one end of the car with washers, the other end will go down slightly. Unfortunately, now the car has some pretty severe body wobble. The car body can rock independent of the wheels. To keep a car from rocking, it needs a three-point suspension. To accomplish that, one bolster screw needs to be tight enough so that it won't allow the truck to rock side to side. The screws on this car, though, are already as tight as they'll go. The screw mount on this car sticks down through the hole in the truck. The problem is that it's preventing the screw from clamping down more tightly on the truck. I'll fix this by filing a small amount of material from the screw mount. I'm not taking it off completely, just making it shorter. There. Now I can tighten the screw so that the truck can still pivot, but it can't rock side to side. You only want to do this on one end. The other truck should rock so that the car can roll over an even track. Now the car stops rocking when the wheels settle. I'll check the couplers one last time to make sure I didn't mess anything up while fixing the wobble. When I'm done with the car and I'm satisfied that it meets all of my operational requirements, including coupler height, wheel gauge, and a three-point suspension, I'll put a dab of green paint on the bottom so that I'll know later that this car's already been worked on. This car is typical of many N-scale cars with truck-mounted couplers. The coupler on the A end is slightly low. The coupler on the B end is also low. It's impossible to read without a magnifying glass, but the stencil on the end of the car says it should have 36-inch wheels. The wheels that come with the car look more like 33s. I'll remove them from the trucks. The wheel on the left is a scale 36-inch wheel from Fox Valley. The wheel on the right is what was on the car. Now I can install the Fox Valley wheels. The coupler in the A end is now at the correct height, and the B end is too. Not only did this fix the coupler height issue, but it also makes the car look better since it has the correct size wheels on it. This car has one high coupler and one low coupler. It also still has the stock plastic McHenry couplers that it came with. Before I do anything else, I want to swap those for Katie's. The end axles on these cars are in the way of the coupler box and screw, so I'll start by removing the trucks. Next, I'll take out the coupler screws. This car has an uncoupling lever attached to the bottom of the coupler box, so I need to be careful. I'll use a small screwdriver to pop the lid up just enough to remove the old coupler. Now I can insert a KD-158 and replace the coupler screw. Make sure that the coupler can move freely from side to side. I'll put the trucks back on so I can retest the car. The A end looks pretty good, but the trip pin is hanging too low. I'll use my KD trip pin pliers to bend it up a little. Now it looks good. The trip pin is slightly above the clearance gauge, but that won't really hurt anything, so I'll leave it alone. The B end is close, but still slightly high. To fix the B end, I'll start by removing the truck again. 
Moving the coupler box down doesn't look like a practical option on this car, so I'll need to shave the bolster. The body bolster has a cylindrical piece sticking down, so filing that is out. That leaves the truck. There isn't a lot of material that can be removed from this truck, but the coupler isn't that far out of alignment, so hopefully it'll be enough. I'll use a flat file to remove material from the bolster area. If you're careful, you can do this with the axles still in the truck. It's important to go slow and check often to make sure that the bolster isn't becoming tilted. We don't want the car leaning to one side. When doing this, I'll often check the height without putting the bolster screw back in the car. That makes it easy to keep going if I haven't yet removed enough material. In this case, it looks like I got it. I ended up removing all of the raised circle on the top of the truck, so that hole is now flush with the rest of the cross piece. At this point, it's important to remember that this truck is now custom fit to the B end of the car. When doing maintenance in the future, I'll need to be careful not to swap the trucks end for end, or both couplers will end up at the wrong height. Now I can replace the bolster screw. This car's done. This is the HO version of the N scale car we looked at earlier. Both couplers on this car are high. The one on the A end is very high and the one on the B end is slightly high. This car has separate coupler boxes which will make lowering the couplers a little easier. First though, this is a tank car and prototype photos show that it should have shelf style couplers. I'm using a pair of KD 119 SE type shelf couplers on this car and I'm going to mount them in KD draft gear boxes. For clearance, I'll start by filing off the lip on the top of the KD coupler box. I also need to cut off a small amount of material from the back of the box. I'll trim the lid to match. Now I can assemble the coupler in the shortened box. Since I've modified the box and it's not holding together on its own, I'm going to glue the lid in place with some liquid styrene cement. Now I can install the new coupler boxes and test the car again. The A end is still a hair too high. The B end looks pretty good. KD makes shims to lower coupler boxes. They come in 10 thousandths and 15 thousandths thickness. This one is 10 thousandths. I'll need to trim the end slightly to match the shortened coupler box. I'll put the shim between the draft gear box and the tank car body and then reattach the box. Now the coupler looks right. Just like the Atherin boxcar we looked at earlier, this car has a little bit of wobble. The fix is similar. Normally this just involves tightening one of the bolster screws so that the truck can pivot but not rock side to side. Unfortunately on this car the screws are already as tight as they'll go. This car has a brass post that sticks down through the truck. It's just a little too long to allow the screw to clamp the truck tightly. I'll need to file the post to shorten it a little. Now I can tighten the truck down so that it pivots side to side but won't rock. Now the car settles down when the wheels settle on the rails. This car's done. I've already swapped KD-158s for the Kato couplers that came with this car. Unfortunately, the coupler on the A end of this car is very low. The coupler on the B end is also low. I think part of the problem here is that the KDs are too loose in the Kato boxes. I'll try using some KD draft gear boxes instead. To get them to fit, I'll need to file off the lip around the front of the coupler boxes. Then I'll need to shorten them using the Kato box as a guide. I'll also need to notch the corners of the coupler opening in the car body. Now I can mount the couplers in the KD boxes and check the car again. Fortunately, the A end came out perfect. The B end is still a little low. There's no good way to raise the coupler box, and on this car, the weird bolsters make it difficult to use conventional washers. I've cut a tiny shim made of 10,000 styrene to fit inside the coupler box. This is a little tricky. I need to slip the shim under the coupler shank inside the box. Once I'm satisfied with the fit, I'll use some liquid styrene cement to glue it down. This won't bond with the metal coupler shank. Make sure that the coupler still moves freely side to side. Looks like that did the trick. Now this car's done. This is an N-Scale Kato SDF 40-2 or SDP 40F. The front coupler is low. The rear coupler is also low. Probably the best way to fix this is to convert the model to Microtrains couplers. Microtrains has a conversion chart that you can download from their website, but unfortunately this locomotive isn't on it. A lot of Kato N-Scale diesels need the Microtrains 2004 coupler, so that's what I'm going to use. First I'll pry out the clips that hold in the stock couplers. Microtrains 2004 is a kit with parts for two pairs of couplers, including mounting screws. I'll start by clipping the coupler parts using sprue cutters. The trip pins and centering springs are in the little clear things that look like pills. Pull them apart on a surface where the small parts won't get lost. 
First I'll insert the trip pin through the hole in the knuckle half of the coupler. The trip pin fits through the small hole in the other half of the coupler. I'll put the assembled coupler over the post in the Microtrain's draft gear box. Then I'll use my hobby knife to install the centering spring. This is hard to do and harder to show, but I managed to get the top of the coupler box on. None of this will hold together on its own. This type of plastic doesn't glue very well. Instead, I'll heat weld the coupler box together with my soldering iron. You can use the clip that came with the model to hold the Microtrain's coupler, but I've had trouble with them falling out, so I prefer a screw. The 0090 screws that come with the Microtrain's couplers seem a little too long, so I'm going to cut mine down a little. The screws will go into the existing holes in the Kato pilots. Since the pilots are plastic, I haven't found it necessary to pre-tap the holes. Now the front coupler is pretty close. The rear one looks pretty good too. I'm going to call this locomotive done. This engine still has the stock Atlas plastic couplers on it. They're at the wrong height, but before I do anything else, I'm going to change them out for Katie's. I'll start by removing the draft gear boxes on both ends. Then I can pop the bottom lids off the boxes and get rid of the stock two-piece plastic couplers. I'll be using KD-158 whisker couplers on this engine. They drop right into the Atlas boxes. Be sure that the coupler moves freely and centers itself. I like to use a screwdriver on diesels like this to hold the uncoupling lever to keep it from getting caught in the coupler box. Now I'll replace the screws. Let's check it again. The front end looks close, but the trip pin is hanging too low. The rear end has the same issue. I'll adjust both with my KD trip pin pliers. Now that the trip pin is adjusted, I can see that the front coupler is still slightly low. The rear coupler looks perfect. I could try to fix the front coupler with the shell in place, but I might damage some details in the process. To be on the safe side, I'll remove both coupler boxes. On this model, the shell will now come loose from the chassis. Some diesels have additional screws, so be careful. Since the coupler is low, I need to raise the draft gear box. I could either remove material from the top of the coupler box or from the coupler mounting pad. I'm choosing to remove material from the mounting pad using a flat file. This can be a little bit tedious. After filing for a while, I'll attach the coupler to the chassis and check it again. This is still a hair too low, so I'm going to remove the coupler and file some more. Now it looks good. Now I'll remove the coupler and put the shell back on. Before reattaching the front coupler, I'll use my hobby knife to trim a small amount of plastic from the top of the coupler box opening in the pilot so that it's flush with the raised mounting pad in the chassis. After everything is back together, I'll check the couplers one last time to make sure they're right. This locomotive is now done. This engine has a KD58 coupler mounted on the tender. The front of the engine doesn't have a working coupler. Installing one is beyond the scope of this program, so I'm going to leave that alone for now. The tender coupler is high. In this case, since the coupler box is accessible, I'll use a shim. This technique will also work on some freight cars. First, I'll remove the coupler box from the tender. As I mentioned earlier, Katie sells shims for this purpose, but it's also easy enough to make one. I'll use a scrap piece of 10,000th styrene. First, I'll mark it and cut a strip as wide as the draft gear box. Next, I'll cut it to length. I'll align the shim with the top of the coupler box and flip it over. Now I can drill a hole for the coupler screw. I'm using some scrap wood so I don't drill through my tabletop. This is the finished shim. Now I can reinstall the coupler with the shim between the coupler box and the tender body. Looks good. Having all the couplers at the right height really does make it less likely that the trains are going to come apart when you don't want them to. For me anyway, that makes it a lot more fun to run trains. Thanks for watching and good luck with your projects.